This is the prophetic royal coat of arms ministry, the reformed Pentecostal Anglo Saxon and royal empire of the kingdom of God denomination coming to you. Our Sunday worship service is 11 a.m. Our Thursday night Bible study is 7 p.m. And I am Chaplain Bishop Archduke Dr. Robert L. Maxwell of the Prophetic Royal Code of Arms Ministry, Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomerania Livonia, Field Marshal of the Prophetic Royal Code of Arms Ministry, and Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merit of the Prophetic Royal Code of Arms Ministry. Today we're going to be looking at First Kings nineteen. So, we're going to pray, so without further ado, let's open up with word of prayer. Dear Yahweh, we come before you. Yahweh, and we ask that you would fill us up with the Holy Ghost. Let this be a message, a word that someone needs to hear today. Let it be apostolic, let it be prophetic. We ask in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, let us mercury physically and spiritually ask and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost, that my preaching and teaching be accepted to you. Let it be a, let this message be an apostolic prophetic word, Father God, because I really know that you want to speak to us in an apostolic, prophetic way, because someone needs to hear this word, that my preaching and teaching be accepted to you, Father God, I'll be asking the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Ghost, grant us wisdom. Concerning the subject, help us to see from your perspective, dear Akuma, in the name of Yeshua, Messiah, as we pray for the power of the Holy Ghost. Let us, let our Hearts and minds be in tune to the still, small, whispering voice of God today in this message. We ask and pray in E.A. Shushkistas' name to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the backsliding 
to return back to you and that you were that someone will hear this message and get saved through asking the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who power all the goes. Repeat after me, God's elect and very elect. And say, bless me for I have sinned. Now it's my turn. The Lord, utter man, Yahweh Elohim, be in in your heart and upon your lips that you may truly and humbly confess your sins. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now I want you to say this next church, God's elect, say this. I confess to you, Almighty God, to His elect and very elect, and to you that I have sinned by my own fault and thought, word, and deed, the things done and left undone. For these and all other sins which I cannot now remember, I am truly sorry. I pray God to have mercy on me, and I firmly intend amendment of life, and I humbly beg forgiveness of God and His Alive and very alive, and ask you for counsel, correction, and absolution. I want you to say that in your heart and pronounce that and believe it in your heart. <clears throat> it's my turn. Our Optimine Yeshua Messiah, who has left power to his elect and very elect to absolve all sins who truly repent and believe in him of his great mercy forgiveness you all your offenses and by his authority committed to me I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and then, <clears throat> Lord has put away all your sins. Now I want you to say, God's church, God's church, thanks be to God. Now I'm going to say, go, abide in peace, and pray for me, uh, sinner.
in the name of God the Father, God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ for the for remission of sin, I absolve you of your sins of omission and commission. We ask and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Audio und Hoffnung für die Welt. Prophetische Royal Wappenministerium. Die reformierten Pfingstkirchen angelsächsischen und königlichen Reich des Reiches Gottes. Stückelung. Ich bin seine kaiserliche und königliche Hoheit Erzherzog von Kamm und der Hohenzelle, seine Gnadenherzog der Kammern in Addition, Jemand, drei cleveren Arzt Kern Robert in Maxwell, minus dh.m, bh.de, dicon, minus Royal Gott von Pommern und Liebert Feldmarschall. BECAM, der Heilige und militärischen Orden der Verdienste des Kamm, Minus und Gründer der Kamm der Pass und Trick, Minus Gott, der Hohenzunge, Gründer von 2005. Mit freundlichen Grüßen. Alright, First Kings 19. He told Jezebel what Elijah had done, and that he had slaughtered the prophets of Baal. Two, so Jezebel sent this message to Elijah, May the gods also go me by this time tomorrow I have failed to take your life, like those whom you killed. Three, Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. For then he went alone into the desert, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough. Lord, he said, Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Five then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him, and told him, Get up and eat. Six he looked around and saw some bread baked on hot stones, and a jar of water. So he ate, and drank, and lay down again. Seven then the angel of the Lord came on him, and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, for there is a long journey ahead of you. Eight, so he got up and ate, and drank, and the food gave him enough strength, to travel forty days, and forty nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. Nine, there he came to a cave, where he spent the night. But the Lord said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Ten, Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God all night. But the people of Israel had broken their covenant with you, torn down your orders, and killed every one of your prophets. I alone am left, and now they are trying to kill me, too. Eleven go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast, that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Twelve and, after the earthquake there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire there was the sound of a gentle whisper. Thirteen, when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Fourteen, he replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God all night. But the people of Israel had broken their covenant with you, torn down your orders, and killed every one of your prophets. I am a man left, and now they are trying to kill me, too. Fifteen, then the Lord told him, Go back the way you came, and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazak to be king of Aram. Sixteen, then anoint Jehu son of Nimshi to be king of Israel, and anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Mahala to replace you as my prophet. Seventeen, anyone who escapes from Hazak will be killed by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Eighteen, yet I will preserve seven thousand others in Israel who have never bowed to Baal or kissed him. 
when Team Soul Elijah went and found Elisha son of Shaphat plowing a field with a team of oxen. There were eleven teams of oxen ahead of him, and he was plowing with the twelfth team. Elijah went over to him, and threw his cloak across his shoulders, and walked away again. Twenty Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah, and said to him, First let me go, and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Elijah replied, Go on back. But consider what I have done to you. Twenty-one Elisha then returned to his oxen, killed them, and used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the other plowmen, and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. Doppelpunkt 1 und ich habe berichtete der Isabel alles, was er dir getan hatte, und alles, wie er alle Propheten mit dem Schwerte getötet hätte. 1 G19 Doppelpunkt 2 Da sandte Isabel einen Boten zu Elia und ließ ihm sagen, du sollen mir die Götter tun und so hinzufügen, wenn ich nicht morgen um diese Zeit dann neben dem Leben eines von ihnen mache. 1 G19 Doppelpunkt 3 Und als er das sah, machte er sich auf und ging fort um seines Lebens willen, und kam nach Borer Seba, das zu ihm der gehört, und er ließ seinen Knaben dort zurück. 1 G19 Doppelpunkt 4 Er selbst aber ging in die Wüste, eine Tagereise weit, und kam und setzte sich unter einen Dienstersprach. Und er bat, dass seine Seele stürbe, und sprach, es ist genug, denn nun, Jahwe, meine Seele, denn ich bin nicht besser als meine Väter. 1 G19 Doppelpunkt 5 Und er legte sich nieder und schlief ein unter den Dienstersprach. Und siehe da, ein Engel rührte ihn an und sprach zu ihm, stehe auf, es. 1 G19 Doppelpunkt 6 Und als er hinblickte, siehe, da lag zu seinen Häupten ein Kuchen, auf heißen Steinen gebacken, und ein Kotwasser. Und er aß und trank und legte sich wieder hin. 1 G19 Doppelpunkt 7 Und der Engel Jahwes kam zum zweiten Male wieder und rührte ihn an und sprach, stehe auf, es. Denn der Weg ist zu weit für dich. 1 G19 Doppelpunkt 8 Und er stand auf und aß und trank. Und er ging in der Kraft dieser Speise 40 Tage und 40 Nächte bis an den Berg Gottes, den Bogen. 1 G19 Doppelpunkt 9 Und er ging da selbst in die Höhle und übernachtete da selbst. Und siehe, es hat Jahwes geschah zu ihm, und er sprach zu ihm, Was tust du hier, Elia? 1 G19 Uhr 10 Und er sprach, Ich habe sein geeifert für Jahwe, den Gott der Herrscharen, denn die Kinder Israel haben deinen Bund verlassen, deine Altäre niedergerissen und deine Propheten mit dem Schwerte getötet. Und ich allein bin übrig geblieben, und sie trachten danach, mir das Leben zu nehmen. 1 G19 Uhr 11 Und er sprach, geh hinaus und stelle dich auf den Berg vor Jahwe. Und siehe, Jahwe ging vorüber, und ein Wind, groß und stark, zerriss die Berge und zerschmetterte die Felsen vor Jahwe her, Jahwe war nicht in dem Winde. Und nach dem Winde ein Erdbeben, Jahwe war nicht in dem Erdbeben. 1 G19 Uhr 12 Und nach dem Erdbeben ein Feuer, Jahwe war nicht in dem Feuer. Und nach dem Feuer der Ton eines leisen Säusens. 1 G19 Uhr 13 Und es geschah, als er ja es hörte, da verhüllte er sein Angesicht mit seinem Mantel, und ging hinaus und stellte sich an den Eingang der Höhle. Und siehe, eine Stimme geschah zu ihm, also, was tust du hier, Elia? 1 G19 Uhr 14 Und er sprach, ich habe sein geeifert für Jahre, den Gott der Herrscharen, denn die Kinder Israel haben deinen Bund verlassen, deine Altäre niedergerissen und deine Propheten mit dem Schwerte getötet, und ich allein bin übrig geblieben, und sie trachten danach, mir das Leben zu nehmen. 1 G19 Uhr 15 Und Jahwe sprach zu ihm, Gehe, kehre zurück deines Weges, nach der Wüste von Damaskus, und wenn du angekommen bist, so sei der Hasel zum König über Syrien. 1 G19 Uhr 16 Und Jehu, den Sohn Nimsis, sollst du zum König über Israel salben, und Elisa, den Sohn Safats, von Apemeula, sollst du zum Propheten salben an deiner Stadt. 1 G19 Uhr 17 Und es soll geschehen, wer dem Schwerte Hasels entrinnt, den wird Jehu töten, und wer dem Schwerte Jehus entrinnt, den wird Elisa töten. 1 G19 Uhr 18 Aber ich habe 7000 in Israel übrig gelassen, alle die Knie, die sich nicht vor dem Bein gebeugt haben, und jeden Mund, der ihn nicht geküsst hat. 1 G19 Uhr 19 Und er ging von deinem Umfang Elisa, den Sohn Safats, welcher gerade pflügte mit zwölf Jochenern vor sich her, und er war bei dem Zwölften. Und Elia ging zu ihm hin und warf seinen Mantel auf ihn. 1 G19 Uhr 20 Und er verließ die Rinder und lief Elia nach und sprach, 
Lass mich doch meinen Vater und meine Mutter küssen, so werde ich dir nachfolgen. Und er sprach zu ihm, Gehe, kehre zurück, denn was habe ich dir getan? 1 g 19 Uhr 21 und er kehrte von ihm zurück und nahm das Jahrfender und schlachtete es, und mit dem Geschirr der Rinde kochte er das Fleisch derselben und gab es den Leuten, und sie aßen, und er machte sich auf und folgte er ihr nach und diente ihm. Still small voice. Utterly discouraged, Elijah fled to Mount Horb, where he asked God to let him die, 1904, and God taught him a wonderful lesson. God was not in the wind or earthquake or fire, but in the still small voice, 11 and 12, Elijah's ministry had been a ministry of miracles. Fire and the sword, he had shut the heavens, had been sustained by the ravens, and by a jar of mill and cruise of oil that filled not, had raised the dead, had called down fire from heaven, had slain the prophet of Baal with the sword, had brought rain to the land. It seems like God was aiming to tell Elijah that while forces and specular demonstrations of power are sometimes necessary by reason of a crisis in God's plan, yet after all, God's real work in the world is not accomplished by such methods that God sometimes does and sometimes calls men to do things that are utterly contrary to God's uh, nature to do. Many centuries later Elijah again appeared to mortal view in the Mount of Transfiguration talking with Christ of the work that now at last was being introduced to the earth, namely the transforming of human lives into the image of God by the still small voice of Christ in the hearts of men. So Elijah on a mission from God to mission of God to minister to Israel the northern kingdom of Israel at this time under Ahab and Jezebel to get Israel to repent of their sins and turn back to God and serve and live for him and he demonstrated these miraculous signs that God used through him and now his life is in danger and so he runs away into a hiding spot And he basically poured out his heart to God, how utterly defeated he feels, depressed, in a low state of mind, low self-esteem, and so forth. And he prayed and prayed to God until he fell asleep then God sent his angels 
to wake up, Elijah to eat. To get strength, miraculous have fed Elijah to have strength. Then he went back to sleep. Then God sends another angel to wake him up again. Tell him to eat, to be full. Another miraculous feeding to get to eat, to be full. Because Elijah's mission was not done yet. So, he walked to Mount Zion, where Moses received the Ten Commandments, the more on civil law. And he stayed the night in the cave. And of course he repeats again the discouragement he feels of Israel's disobedience turning away from the covenant of grace that God made with them and chase after the false gods and prophecy of the time And so God essentially told him to wait for a sign. Something miraculous happened. Then an earthquake. And fire. All these things going on. And then God speaks to Elijah in a gentle breeze. Gives him the prophecy, the message that God wants him to hear, to understand that he's going to need because he's going to have to go back and finish his mission. His mission was to go anoint the king of Syria. Anoint a king of Syria. Why? Because God was commissioning and anointing this king to exercise his judgment, to exercise God's judgment upon Israel and their disobedience. Boy, they got that. Look what happened. Eventually, Israel constantly turning away from the covenant of grace over and over led to the Caesarean captivity and the ten and a half northern tribes went into Syrian captivity and as I said before they ascended over the Caucasus Mountains migrated Europe uh, Canada, Alaska, America 
Sedra and settled there, later called Caucasians, and that's where they're at. So anyways... And to anoint another king for over Israel for a purpose. To cleanse the northern kingdom of Israel from its idols, idols and false gods that they're worshipping. And the successor of Elijah as the next prophet to Israel. And God giving him reassurance that a remnant of the house of Israel did not bow down and worship Bel. In verse 4, the sacred name is using, used Yahweh. Verse 8, we see the word 40, which is the number of probation. Later we see... And 7,000 did not bow, worship Bel, Israelites. Seven referring to... Referring to spiritual perfection. It is the number or hallmark of the Holy Spirit's work. He is the author of God's word and seven is stamped on it as the watermark is seen in the manufacturer's paper. He is the author and giver of life and seven is the number which regulates every period of incubation, gestation, Insects, birds, animals, and man. In verse 8, we have the word Elohim. It is its first occurrence connects it with creation and gives it gives it its essential meaning as the creator. It indicates his relationship to mankind as his creatures where it stands in contrast with 
Yahweh as indicating covenant relationship. Elohim is God the Son, the living word with creature, with creatures formed to create. And later with humans form, uh, and later with human form to redeem, begotten of his father, refer all worlds, born of his mother in the world, in this creature form, he appears to the Pentateuch, toots a form not, uh, a form not temporarily assume uh, El Elohim is indicating by an ordinary small type God <clears throat> uh, the Lord of God of hosts verse 10 First occurrence of this title, which means, which is Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh It means the eternal, immutable One He who was and is and is to come And we have the sacred name being used. And So, Who is to be an Elohim? Who is to be worshipped? It is God in connection with His will rather than His power. In 
verse 11 we have the word when which means <coughs> in the original language which means spirit the invisible force Rua, uh, still small voice, the sound of stillness, verse 12. Elisha means L. L. My God is salvation. So, we have a few important facts there. And we, this chapter we see Jezebel making an oath that calls down a penalty on herself if she should fail to kill Elijah within days time. Verse 3 we see the southern territory of Judah. Elijah fled outside the borders of the northern kingdom. So, Elijah travels to the Mount, uh, Mount Sion, the original site of God's revelation to Moses. There's an important theme there, too. Elijah prepares for a divine revelation much in the way that uh, he prepared Moses at Mount Zion 
wind fire or wind earth and fire these phenomenons were indications of God's presence on Mount Zion but God does not reveal himself to Elijah through them God speaks to Elijah in a small voice God anoints those that God is going to use to exercise his judgment upon the disobedience of the Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel. Elijah means God is salvation or God saves, which is characterized by Elisha's mission. Got told to anoint Elisha, uh, Elijah to anoint Elisha, who was, you know, pretty much a farmer, pretty wealthy, you might say, and his mission is now to be the next prophet of God for Israel. And so, what does he do? He makes a sacrifice and feeds everyone. According to, you might say, the moral, civil, and ceremonial law, a commitment to Christ, to the Messianic Savior, Jesus Christ. So you might say that uh, Elisha made a commitment to the Messianic Savior, to Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice, declaring to God, I'm going to now live your way and no longer live the way I was living. And then Elisha goes under training of Elijah. So he wasn't equal yet because he had some training to take place. So... There is... In a sense, type and shadow of Christ Jesus, who well will execute his office of King. priest in the office of prophet to execute his judgments and 
decrees using the all the means and tools that he needs to do to execute his plan of his unfolding plan of redemption Wow. He uses all the means to execute his unfolding plan of redemption. And so, while in the midst of the cruelness and evil of the world we live in in the second world age and heaven age and he uses his elect and very elect and all the means to execute his judgment to bring about redemption conviction conversion transformation his unfolding plan of redemption the millennial blessings the slow gradual process of christianizing the whole entire world ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity you can see that type going on while in the midst of the storm God's going to execute his office of priest king and prophet in the midst this wicked world world slowly and gradually bringing about his purpose and plan not only for you in your personal life but around uh, around us And you see the 7,000 didn't bow, which simply is a type and shadow. Uh, it basically means a non-literal, literal thousand years. In other words, an uncalculable number of God's elect and very elect will be preserved and will not bow down and worship Satan and will not bow down and worship the antichrist the antichrists of the world that's in control God uses his elect and very elect to fulfill his purpose and plan in the world. Fulfill the great commission to proclaim redemption in the and uh, the whole counsel of God 
his unfolding plan of redemption to the world. He'll use his very elect and elect to exercise, uh, to fulfill God's purpose and plan, not only in your personal life, but corporately in your role in the bigger picture of the Great Commission, God's Church, the preachers and teachers. He uses His Church and the preachers and teachers, the prophets and apostles to and preach and teach the Word of God to fulfill God's great commission, not only personally, but corporately. What is that great commission? Well, that's the systematic preaching and teaching of the Word of God. And using those implements to bring about the Christianization of the whole entire world in all four corners of the earth God used his very elect and elect in the Old Testament. The remnant to continue to preach the message of God's unfolding plan to Israel and of course Judah trying to get them to communicate in the gospel to them so to speak to get them to turn from their wicked and evil ways and turn back to the covenant of grace that God made them made with them and he promises to preserve that remnant not only of the elect but the very elect to carry on the mess the mission at hand to try to get Israel and Judah to turn from their wicked ways and come back to the covenant of grace that God made them, made with them. But as we know, they refused and destruction and captivity took place. Even though, and God carries on, uh, continues to carry on using his remnant, the elect and the very elect, to carry on the mission. Preaching the good news. And that remnant starts out small and slowly and gradually becomes the biggest kingdom in the garden, the mustard seed, slowly, like in God's remnant, the very elect and elect, like uh, a mustard seed that slowly, uh, slowly and gradually becomes the biggest kingdom on the earth. So God, despite the persecution, the dangers, 
at hand, God still preserves his elect to carry on his mission and purpose of communicating the good news to the world. And that remnant becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. World then will be Christianized, ushering in the golden age of peace and prosperity. This uh, return of Christ bodily, destroying the devil and flesh, casting them into hell, the resurrection of the dead, some to life and some to everlasting destruction, rewards after the great white throne, judgment and the eternal state fully and completely being established and the problem of saw the problem uh the problem of sin and death will fully and finally be resolved and paradise lost will become paradise restored so essentially god is preserving his elect and very elect Preserving his elect. To bring about the restoration of all things. And And bring it and the to bring about the uh, pro, problem solved uh, the renewal of all things moving from a small mustard seed to a big the biggest in the garden paradise lost will be paradise restored and the problem of sin and death will fully and finally be resolved and so essentially he's using his remnant his elect and very elect to bring about that and through various means to bring about the conversion of the whole world and the crush and defeat of satan the Antichrist overthrowing Satan forever and ever. We see this happening. We see that that's what he uses the remnant for. Who's the remnant? Oh, well, the church and the preachers and teachers. And essentially, that's basically the whole mission. When the fall happened, God made this covenant. Covenant of grace. And so, essentially, the seed starts there, like into a mustard seed. And from that, from that point in time all the way to now, all the way into the future, is the beginning of the start 
of that seed growing slowly and gradually becoming the biggest tree in the garden God's unfolding plan of redemption and so God's unfolding plan of redemption st go starts and goes on throughout the Old Testament all the way into the New Testament all the way into the future the mission of fulfilling the Great Commission the slow gradual process of Christianizing the whole entire world ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity the bodily return of Christ the defeat of Satan the devil the resurrection great judgment and the eternal state being completely and fully established paradise lost become paradise restored and the problem of sin and death fully and finally resolve and essentially when Christ established when God established the second world age and heaven age from that point on after the fall when that covenant was made slowly and gradually uh, The third world age and heaven age is being established while at the same time the second world age and heaven age is being destroyed so to speak and per and the third world age and heaven age slowly and gradually being established to the point of completion when the third world age and heaven age is finally established the eternal state for all eternity And it's important to note that Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. because Christ is all in all, so to speak. And the descendant of David who would sit on the throne of God It always the mission must carry on. So anyways, the mission must carry on. Despite the periods of progression and periods of recession or recession we go through. But the slow, gradual process of Christianization, uh, Christianizing the whole entire world, ushering a golden age of peace and prosperity, is going to take trillions and trillions and millions of years, slowly and gradually. And there'll be periods of recession and periods of 
progression for the church. Consequently, lose some souls. And as we read in Revelation chapter 12, I believe. <coughs> Only one third of the angels from beginning to end won't, uh, only one third of mankind won't be saved from beginning till end, but the rest will be saved. And God's moral and civil law will be established worldwide. And they'll be more saved than not during that time. There might be a small number that's not saved, but they will adhere hypocritically to their Kaiser and King, who is Jesus Christ. Christ's empire is slowly and gradually being established Christ Jesus is the Kaiser of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven and king of the earth. And we are his empire. And this kingdom it is a spiritual kingdom with real, actual, real, actual affecting change in the world through the agency of the Holy Ghost. The empire of Anglo, the empire of the Hebrew, the Anglo-Saxon Hebrew, Israelites, and multi-ethnic house of Judah and the descendants, the Scot and Irish descendants of the house of Judah and the Gentiles who believe and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, the six day creation. It's going, it's a spiritual kingdom. It's not going to be like a physical type of kingdom like Israel once was in the Old Testament, but you, but I guarantee you for sure he will still be the Kaiser of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven and king of the world, his elect and very elect. His empire, his church, the elect, His elect, his, and we, his elect and very elect, are his member, are his members of his aristocracy. So rest assured, even though it's a spiritual empire, and spiritual empire 
he will still be Kaiser of our lives and King. And he will reign over all the nations. But again, spiritual kingdom. But very having real effect in the world. And and moving that in part to the eternal state. So, anyways. When you're down and out, feel spiritually dry, you just sometimes need to lay down and let it all out to God. <clears throat> the overwhelming pressures of life, job and so forth. the unbearable almost seems like task of fulfilling the Great Commission. You need to just let it all out in prayer. Go to your hiding spot like Elijah did. Because Elijah was human. Even though he's a prophet, a mouthpiece of God to Israel, he was still human, and it is God that did the miracles, not Elijah. He just used used the miracles through him. But Elijah, being a prophet, is human. And after this great spiritual victory, overwhelming feeling of being enclosed engulfed him of the task at hand that he must do and he just want man I just want to give up and die it's too much for me too much to bear and so he basically uh, let it let God have it so to speak <clears throat> and so it's okay to let God have it when you're feeling down and out and depressed go to your hiding spot and pray for edification the strength to build yourself up in the elect your edification Spiritual edification, refreshing, washing, pray, rest. Go to your hiding spot and tune the world out. So you can get refreshing in that word that you need in that situation that will strengthen and empower you to tackle the hurdles 
that you're going to need to uh, going to need to tackle your role in fulfilling the Great Commission. and personal edification, transfer and renewal. So we all need to be refreshed. And how do we get refreshed? through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel, through meditating, thinking, reflecting, listening to the still small voice. You're waiting for some magnificent thing to take place. And God does that, but He may be leading you to listen to that still small voice the words you need to make the next steps to tackle what is at hand you gotta refresh yourself through prayer praise and proclamation of the gospel through study of the gospel through prayer through meditation reflecting or just basking in the presence of God in the high place his throne of God because the Bible says we can now go boldly before the throne of God And he will give us the edification and those things which need to build you up in the edification of the elect, the covenantal blessings, the covenant of grace, and the end to know to know, to know that victory is certain in your life because God's going to give you what you need to make that next spiritual victory in your life. And you know that, and you know that victory will be sure. You know for certain that the world will be Christianized. Golden age of peace and prosperity, resurrection and so on is for sure. And Satan, the devil and the flesh and your sins will be defeated. And God will give you the power and will to make the appropriate reformation amendments that you need to make to be refreshed, to be renewed, to carry on your mission with vigor. The filling of the Holy Ghost. The things and so you can make yourself humble so God can exercise what are gifts of the Holy Ghost that God's given you to exercise what are gifts that God the Father gave you and the gifts that God the Son gave you all those gifts God will give you so you can 
be humble, receptive, and so God can work those gifts through you to accomplish the mission at hand. Your preachers and teachers need to do the same. We all need to do the same. And then he'll give us the power to accomplish the task at hand that he wants us to accomplish. To give us what we need for edification to tackle and handle the problems at hand that you must deal with. Because if we're going to accomplish the purpose of God, then we need to take time to go and shut the world out, tune the world out, go to your prayer closet and pray it through until you hear a snap in the Holy, a snap, the Holy Ghost. And you do it, and you pray and pray until you get that word. But don't be looking at for it in spectacular ways, although he may do it in a spectacular way. Or he'll do it quietly. And so you must be tune out the world and listen to see where that word that you need to accomplish the goals and things that you have at hand that must be tackled, crushed, and out of the way. And the reassurance of of the covenant blessings the covenant of grace blessings that will build you up and edify you spiritual renewal refreshing maybe that means just going for a walk riding your bike something like that Well, Elijah got his word, was told what to do, and then he did it. And that's exactly what you got to do. No questions asked, do it. Yeah, we all need training. Enlightening our minds and hearts. To accomplish the task at hand. To fulfill God's purpose and plan for your life. Preachers and teachers teach you 
disciple you. We all need to be discipled so we can become Christ followers. Be discipled through the prophets and apostles and your preachers and teachers. We all need that training. Need training on the essential doctrines of the Christian faith so you know what you believe, why you believe it, and how to do the work of ministry. You need to have that knowledge so you can accomplish the goals that God has set for you so you won't be deceived by Satan that wants to lead you astray. And you now have that power and God will give you that power to accomplish it, to choose or choose otherwise. You need training to obey the Ten Commandments, to obey God's civil law. Training to be a doer of the Word, not just a hearer of the Word of God. And if you don't have that training discipline, then you will be deceived and fall away from Christ and be led astray. And then become a backslider. And possibly fall completely. And lose your salvation. So it's important that... Uh, we need that necessary training. You know, like I said, God, like I said, sometimes lets us fall until we learn the lessons that God wants us to learn. And then He'll pick us back up and move us on the right trail. Sometimes, God will just let you fall completely. Why? And so you don't want that. You need the training you need. So that won't happen. Because if you fall and you backslide and you stay in that condition until you die without repentance, you will lose your soul. Why? Because you had a said faith rather than a genuine faith. God wants a genuine faith in your life. In order to have a genuine faith in your life, you need the discipline and training of the apostles and prophets and preachers and teachers and so forth. <clears throat> training to be a doer of the Word of God, to be empowered, to, conf to be more and more like Christ Jesus, to because God wants us to conform to the likeness and image of Christ Jesus. He wants holiness in our lives. He wants righteousness in our lives. He wants integrity. He wants character in our lives. He wants you to be his ambassador to the world. To be the set apart, sanctified for the purpose of God.
wants you to be God's aristocracy, his elect and very elect, his noble men and women. In order for that to be accomplished, you need training, discipling, disciplining, so forth. You need to study. Light of creation, light of conscience, special revelation. You need discipline, you need training. And you need times of going to a quiet place to be energized and edified you need to go to your prayer closet and pray in tongues until you're edified sometimes get that renewal seeking the prophets and apostles for edification what is the who are the apostles and prophets well that's the people that's uh, the people of the canonization of scripture the apostles and prophets the word of God special revelation and of course God has preachers and teachers for you to go for edification and so you need that quietness that prayer that meditate uh, meditating studying and so forth so you can be energized and you need the discipline and training so that you can accomplish the goal that God has for your life and when you do that when you when a goal that God has for your life to give you the power to accomplish and tackle those things which you need to tackle and overcome and God will surely give you a victory sometimes you just gotta pray it through until you hear a snap in the Holy in the Holy Spirit, pray it through for that word you need. And we all need that assurance of victory and blessings. So, very important. Because persecution, you're going to suffer persecution of the unsaved, the ret you're going to re receive persecution from the ret reprobate. And so you'll need the strength the refreshing and the training to be tough as nails so you won't be even phased by the persecution of the reprobate the power to need to receive victory and the power to resist the temptations of Satan all everything necessary
training and freshing so you can go out to the four corners of the earth and cast out devils and demons. To fulfill the Great Commission. And healing, it gives you healing too. Spiritual healing. Maybe sometimes supernatural healing. You need that time so you can pray. That strength so you can do some intercessory praying and play and then pray for the covering, the covering of the blood of Jesus upon the world. The power to bring down injustice, corrupt governments and systems. See, uh, Ahab and Jezebel had their prophets of Bel and all that kind of stuff because that is how they kept control of Israel. And so when you start messing with the false prophets and false gods such as atheism, communism, socialism, radical, fanatical, leftist liberalism, philosophical naturalism, etc. You need that spiritual refreshing and that training necessary to go out and crush and bring down those false prophets and apostles and teachers of communi the prop uh, communism, socialism, Marxism, radical leftist liberalism, and etc. Bring down the false prophets and apostles and preachers and teachers of propaganda. Kenites and the rule and reign of the Antichrist. Defeat the Kenites. Let's see, uh, you know, if you look in America, you know, there's a lot of serial killers, you know. And it still goes on. And so we have that that we're up against. And I am pretty sure, not absolutely certain, but I believe such serial killers and so forth are Kenites. And... Almost in, almost in, uh, unredeemable. I mean, sometimes Kenites repent of their sins and so forth and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, but that's very, very rare. Because the Kenites are out there spreading their lies, spreading the lies of philosophical naturalism. Climate change caused by humans. And when you start messing with their structure, their institutions, their education and so forth, they're going to get angry. And the devil and his demons are going to get pissed at you and they're going to attack you. Tempt you. And so you need the refreshing and the 
discipling to beat them to conquer them through the systematic preaching and teaching of the word of God converting your enemies to your friends and I believe and so but in the end the world will be Christianized usher in the golden age of peace and prosperity periods of uh, progression and periods of recession unfortunately we'll lose some souls there will also be periods of apostasy and progression and consequently we'll lose some souls we've been in a period of apostasy upon the church the premillennial dispensation or pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib rapture theology this apostasies started in the late 19th century started by some old lady named some lady named Margaret MacDonald and so then gradually this apostasy infiltrated uh, churches and created this period of recession for the church but this is slowly and gradually being defeated just like all the other apostasies throughout history and so you'll need that strength in your walk with God so you can accomplish your goal to convert the world a gospel of conquest converting every institution making this world Christian blessed with all of Christendom the true religion and the defeat of the false religion the false church which is Satan demons and the Kenites <clears throat> but this spiritual edification and renewing will give you the power to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish to put in your life put into practice in your life in your daily walk with the Lord and the reassurance no matter what happens to you physically or eternity whatever happens to you physically doesn't matter because you're in the hand of God for all eternity the thing you need to worry about is your soul you need to tend to your soul I digress a bit see another thing that's important to note is God gives his bishops and archbishops deacons and even evangelists sometimes the power to ordain
uh, foreign nation to exercise God's judgment upon some sick, sinful, wicked people. He gives us the ability to ordain some kind of punishment or destruction upon some person, situation, or whatever. More so in the essence or sense as a way in which spiritual lesson will be taught. It gives us the power to ordain certain godly leaders to bring about destruction and discipline upon those who need it in any given situation or whatever. It gives us that power to ordain, to ordain destruction on the devil, to pray for friends, brothers, and sisters, and family, and people in our daily life, to pray in an intercessory way, to pray for some kind of situation to take place where God will bring that unrepentant sinner to repentance and salvation. God gives, and especially more so with the elect, but God gives us the power, the elect, the power to ordain archbishops and bishops, dukes, archdukes, marquis, marquises, knights, barons, vice counts, counts, etc., etc., presidents, leaders, so forth. As one of our catechisms are What other sacramental rites involved in the church under the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Other sacramental rites which involved in the church includes confirmation, ordinance, holy matrimony, reconciliation, penitent, and unction. an ordinance. An ordinance is a right in which God gives authority and the grace of the Holy Spirit to those being made bishops, deacons, archbishops, evangelists, through prayer and laying on hands of by bishops, evangelists, and deacons. There's some things God's elect can do, but not everything.
the, the archbishops and bishops and evangelists and deacons can do. Because we see that throughout the Old Testament, the prophets and apostles, which are, and the bishops and the leaders in the New Testament, the very elect. But the church can do that. Bishops, we can ordain empires and kingdoms kings and queens knights baronets barons marcus counts vice counts dukes Archdukes, bishops and archbishops and evangelists and deacons and so forth. We have that ability. But we, however, have, do not have the right to ordain things that are contrary to the word and will of God. And those things will not be ordained. And church as can discipline too. For the church like shunning of those who refuse to repent and get right with God. And the church tells us after a while to just let them loose out of the church to stew in the temptations of Satan until they learn their lessons, get right with God. God will sometimes let us fall for a while in the stew. So until we learn the lessons we need to learn and pick us up and get us right on the right path to go forward in the direction that God wants us to go. And sometimes he can let you completely fall. God countlessly communicating to you, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, man, you got to get right with God and do this and that. And you just don't listen. You don't listen. You won't repent of your sins. You won't get right with God. You keep doing this and that. So God will say, all right, and just keep backsliding. He picks you up sometimes, let drops you down. But it gets to a point where your heart's so impenitent that, hey, he just lets you go. And and then uh, what well, eventually ends up you stay in that backsliding condition until you die, and then you lose your salvation. Why? Well, because you had a said faith rather than a genuine faith. God wants true, genuine, life form, a life-changing, transforming faith. Faith that accompanies works, because we are to be doers of the word of God, to put into practice these truths. But all these things play in a role in God, God's influence. Uh, implements that he uses to bring about the conversion of the world judgment conversion and the golden age of peace and prosperity none of the miracles and The gifts of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. None of those gifts 
we do it, but God does it through us. Utilize those means, brothers and sisters. God's elect and very elect. So, <clears throat> so God is. I'm sensing in the spirit that God. That this word, prophetic word being communicated to you, is a word that you need to do. God is calling you to lay it up. Let God have it in prayer. And calling you to go to your prayer closet go before the bully before the throne of God and repent of your sins and get right with God today and return back to the covenant of grace that God made with you. It's time for your backsliding to end. And you know it. God's let you stew in the misery and you're feeling it and you're feeling horrible, unsure of yourself, unable to Get anywhere. And so now he's calling you to make it right, to make men's with God, make men's the appropriate men's amendments in your life. The reformation that you need to make. God is calling you to reformation today. To go to your prayer closet, to go boldly before the throne of God, let him have it, pour out your heart to him with true repentance, asking God to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And God is saying to you, my friend, by giving you the assurances of the outcome of God's unfolding plan. And so now, he's saying, brother, you need to get it right. You gotta get right. You need to put on the new man and give the old man to uh, Christ exchange your imperfection for his perfection and God is also feel that God is calling some of you to salvation today and God wants to is calling you and you feel the spirit urging you that's the effectual calling and God's urging you to uh, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because you know you need to make some changes in your life. You need Christ as your Lord and Savior and so forth.
So, um, you know. And so anyways, I'm going to give you an opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Glory, hallelujah. What must you do to be saved? No one gets out of this world alive, so this is beyond a doubt the most important question you can ever ask yourself. In fact, the Bible was written so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5.13 First according to scripture you need to realize that you are a sinner. If you do not realize you are sinners you will not recognize your need for a savior. The Bible says, We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Furthermore, you must repent of your sins. Repentance is an old English word that describes a willingness to turn from our sin toward Jesus Christ. It literally means a complete U-turn on the road of life, a change of heart and a change of mind. It means that you are willing to follow Jesus, and to receive him as your Savior. And Lord Jesus said repent and believe the good news. Mark 1.15 Finally, to demonstrate true belief means to be willing to receive. To receive is to trust in and depend on Jesus Christ alone to be the Lord of our lives here and now and our Savior for all eternity. It takes more than knowledge, the devil knows about Jesus and trembles, it takes more than agreement that the knowledge we have is accurate, the devil agrees that Jesus is the Lord. What it takes is to trust in Jesus Christ alone for all eternity. The requirements for eternal life are based not on what you can do but on what Jesus Christ has done. He stands ready to exchange his perfection for your imperfection. According to Jesus Christ, those who realize they are sinners repent of their sins and receive him as Savior and Lord are born again. Regeneration, John 3 to 3, not physically but spiritually. The reality of salvation is not dependent on feelings but rather on the promise of our Savior who says I tell you the truth whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and shall not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. John 5.24, once you are on the road of salvation, you must realize, there are two works of the Holy Ghost. 1. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost, regeneration. 2. The infilling of the Holy Ghost, the empowering of the Holy Ghost, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Moreover, speaking in tongues is the unique initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We must daily be filled with the Holy Ghost. For we are leaky vessels, you then need to be baptized, and learn the ABCs of the Hebrew faith. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior I shall pray a salvation prayer for you all you need to do is just repeat after me repentance shall be necessary. Act 2 colon 38 Repentances and faith are inseparable experiences of grace. Repentances is complete moral you turn on the road of life and being sorry for your sins and turning to God. Faith is the acceptance of Jesus Christ and the complete commitment of the whole self to him as Lord, King and Savior of your life. O oh dear, Almighty God, Master of the Universe, Father God I believe, I am a sinner, lost, spiritually dead condemned to Hades and hell. I have sinned against you, rebelled against you and your whole moral and civil law. I repent to you and ask you to completely forgive me of all my past, present and future sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Father I accept, believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christos. I believe you sent your son Jesus Christ into this world through the virgin birth, to die on the cross to take my place to take away, completely, all my past, present, and future sins. I believe he died on the cross and rose again three days later. I believe he ascended to heaven to the throne and established the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the new kingdom of Israel and became Kaiser, Grand Duke of the heavens and earth and Grand Bishop of the soul and began his rule from the heavens and some day he shall judge the dead and living. I O oh God believe through the resurrection of Christ Jesus we are given eternal life. 
I believe Christ Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. O Heavenly Father, I receive the resurrected life of Christ Jesus into my life. Father God, I now ask that Jesus Christ would live his life in me and through me. I accept and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, as my personal and corporate Savior and Lord of my life. I now promise to serve you for my whole life and forever. Indwell, and baptize me with, in, and through the Holy Ghost. Lead me into all truth and give me the power to serve you for now on and to do what I must do. In the Lord Jesus Christ, I and we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost, O Holy Ghost, convict, convert, bring about reform, repentances, forgiveness of sin, restoration and renewal through my impenitent and the world's hearts. Dear Father God, I confess, believe and trust thee in the Westminster Confession of Faith, the Apostles' Confession and Creed found in one core. 15, 110, and the prophetic royal coat of arms ministry the reformed Pentecostal Anglo-Saxon and royal empire of the kingdom of God denomination. I believe, confess and trust that speaking in tongues is the unique initial evidences of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I confess believe and trust. The world shall be slowly and gradually Christianized for a non-literal 1,000 years and the church shall rule with Christ in paradise and on earth and usher in a golden age of peace and prosperity at the same time for a non-literal 1,000 years. I confess and believe. The church, the elect made up of white and non-white peoples, the body and Christ the head, shall bind, bound and lock the devil into the bottomless pit, slowly and gradually for the millennial period paradise lost shall become paradise restored. Then the problem of sin and death shall fully and finally be resolved. I believe trust and confess after the millennial. The devil is let loose, for a short period, then Christ returns destroys death and the flesh and Satan is thrown into the lake of fire hell, and then the problem of sin and death is resolved. Then we put on immortality. Then, God's great white throne judgment for the unsaved and saved, then for good and bad deed rewards, then finally, the third, heaven age, and the third world age. The eternal state, I believe trust confess. The millennial is the complete resurrection of the world from the dead to life eternal. The millennial is the period between Christ's ascension to the throne and rule from the heavens and Christ's return. I believe, trust and confess most of the book of Revelation was fulfilled in the first three centuries. I believe and confess that the sons of Isaac, Saxons, the twelve tribes of Israel, the Hebrew people they that cross over the great river are descended from the eighth day creation. I believe and confess the man Adam and Eve is the first white man and the first white woman by which the seed line of the Lord Jesus Christ shall come and crush Satan and redeem the whole world. In addition, bring peace and prosperity to the whole world. God created all the non-white peoples on the sixth day and said it was good then on the eighth day God created the first white man and the first white woman, Adam and Eve disobey God's command, rebelled against God, believe the lie of the serpent and actualize sin into existence. Then the world fell and died spiritually to the life of God through Adam. Through Christ the last, Adam the world shall be made alive, and shall be resurrected to eternal life by the end of the millennia. I believe Eve had sex with the devil and Cain was born. And out of Cain's descendants are the Canaanites, and all the descendants of Cain are Canaanites. I believe trust and confess under the old dispensation of the covenant of grace. Nations equals Gentiles descendants from the sixth day creation, were the non-white peoples of the world. Then after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ ascend to the throne and an establishment of the rule from the heavens, paradise, Christ begins to administrate the second dispensation of the covenant of grace through the indwelling, infilling and empowerment of the Holy Ghost. I believe Grand Duke, Grand Bishop Kaiser Jesus Christ and King Kaiser of the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Heaven and King of the Earth open the Gospel to the whole world, and the barrier between Anglo-Saxon Israel the white peoples, and the Gentiles, the nations, the non-white peoples, has been removed and Christ bridged the gap and made the two one people. Under the new dispensation of the covenant of grace, nations and the descendants of Esau, Hagar, 
and the non-white peoples and the house of Israel scattered abroad are the Gentiles. I believe and confess. Israel under the old dispensation of the covenant of grace was the house of Israel and the house of Judah, the elect, united as one the church, in the old whom believed in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then it split into two houses. Israel under the new dispensation of the covenant of grace, is the house of Israel and the house of Judah, and the Gentiles who believe in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior is the elect the church under the new the redeemed of humankind. Under the Old Testament Israel grew from 12 sons to 12 tribes to a theocratic government to a monarch to an empire then it split in two. It became the northern kingdom of Israel ten and a half tribes were assigned to it. In addition, two and a half of the tribes were assigned to the southern kingdom of Judah. Then they were destroyed and the kingdoms collapsed and all of them went into captivity. The northern kingdom collapsed first and went into Assyrian captivity 200 years before the southern kingdom went into captivity. After the house of Israel's captivity they ascended over the Caucasus mountains migrated, settled, established Europe, Great Britain, Canada and America, and that is where they are today whom were later called Caucasians. Then the southern kingdom collapsed with the last king of Judah Zedekiah. Jeremiah escaped with the daughters of Zedekiah to Egypt, one of the daughter's names was Scotia, who married and out of that ancestry came Scotland, the European monarchs and they mixed with the house of Israel. The house of Judah went into Babylonian captivity for seventy years then returned to the Holy Land rebuilt the temple and were there until the destruction of the temple and Jerusalem in 70 AD, and then were scattered throughout the world. God said to the twelve tribes if you obey me, you shall be blessed if you do not I shall scatter you throughout the world. The tribes were scattered throughout the world, because of their disobediences. During the millennial, the twelve tribes shall be scattered and regathered back to God into a new heavens and new earth where holiness and righteousness dwell. In addition, sin and death shall not and flesh shall not. In the first century, the kingdom of God was established, and at the close of the millennial, the new kingdom of Israel shall be fully established made up with the houses of Israel the Anglo-Saxon Hebrew Israelites, the multi-ethnic house of Judah, the Scottish and Irish house of Judah and the Gentiles united forever as one person for all eternity. Moreover, in the Lord Jesus Christ's name I pray through the power of the Holy Ghost, dear Heavenly Father I confess, trust and believe there are three world ages three heaven ages. The world that was, the world that is, the world that shall come and three dispensations of the covenant of grace the Trinity has is and shall administrate all three dispensations of the covenant of grace. In Christ Jesus name, I pray and we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost. Dear God teach me what all this means in Christ, I believe and confess there shall be periods of progression for the church and periods of recession for the church the called out ones, unfortunately, we shall lose some people to death Hades and hell. At the end of the millennial there shall be more saved, than lost. The church shall rise like a loaf of bread and the yeast it shall work itself all the way through the bread. In Jesus Christ's name we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost. I confess, believe and trust this is historically correct and all the sciences confirm it and the light of creation confirms it, the moral law confirms it, and special revelation confirms it, predicted prophecy and the fulfillment of predicted prophecy. The rational, the logical and observation, deduction, induction, and deduced truth confirms it lastly it can be well documented, now let it, be confirmed in Christ Jesus I pray. I bind it, bound it in the heavens, and unleash it on earth through the power of the Holy Ghost. Grant me wisdom, knowledge and the fruits of the Holy Spirit I pray and ask Almighty Father God grant me the composure to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can, and wisdom and knowledge to know the difference living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace. Taking as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy full of joy, in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. In addition through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Ghost indwelling and infilling the Holy Ghost baptism the Holy Ghost Amen.
was müssen sie tun, um gerettet zu werden? Niemand aus der Welt am Leben erhält, so ist dies ohne Zweifel die wichtigste Frage, die sie sich immer anlässt. In der Tat wurde die Bibel geschrieben, so dass sie wissen, dass sie das ewige Leben, eines John 5.13, erste Nacht der Schrift, müssen sie erkennen, dass sie ein Sünder sind. Wenn sie nicht wissen, sie sind Sünder, werden sie nicht ihr Bedürfnis nach einem Erlöser erkennen. Die Bibel sagt, wir alle haben gesündigt und ermangeln der Herrlichkeit Gottes. Römer 3,23 Darüber hinaus müssen sie über ihre Sinnsbuße Busse ist ein altes englisches Wort, das die Bereitschaft von unserer Sünde zu Jesus Christus drehen beschreibt. Es bedeutet wörtlich eine komplette Kehrtwende auf dem Weg der Lebens einer Veränderung des Herzens und eine Änderung des Verstandes. Es bedeutet, dass sie bereit sind, Jesus zu folgen und ihn als Retter empfangen und Herr. Jesus sagte, Busse zu tun und glaubt an das Evangelium, MK 1,15. Schließlich, um wahren Glauben zu demonstrieren, bedeutet bereit zu erhalten zu sein, ist es, in Empfangsvertrauen und abhängig von Jesus Christus allein, um den Herrn unseres Lebens hier und jetzt und unser Retter für alle Ewigkeit sein. Es dauert mehr als Wissen, der Teufel weiß, über Jesus und zittert, dauert es mehr als Vereinbarung, die das Wissen haben wir genau ist, der Teufel stimmt zu, dass Jesus der Herr ist. Was es braucht, ist es, in Jesus Christus allein für alle Ewigkeit zu vertrauen. Die Anforderungen an das ewige Leben nicht auf das, was sie tun können, sondern auf das, was Jesus Christus getan hat, basierend. Er ist bereit, seine Perfektion für ihre Unvollkommenheit auszutauschen. Laut Jesus Christus, diejenigen, die erkennen, dass sie Sünder bereuen das Sünden und nimmt ihn als Erlöser und Herrn wieder, Regeneration, geboren, Johannes 3, 3, Minus nicht physisch, sondern auch geistig. Die Wirklichkeit der Erlösung ist nicht abhängig von Gefühl, sondern das Versprechen unseres Erlösers, der sagt, ich sage euch die Wahrheit, wer meine Worte hört und glaubt dem, der mich hat das ewige Leben und werdet nicht verurteilt werden gesendet. Er hat mehr als vom Tod zum Leben, Jo 5,24, gekreuzt. Wenn sie auf dem Weg des Heils sind, müssen sie wissen, gibt es zwei Werke des Heiligen Geistes. Erste die eine Wohnung des Heiligen Geistes, Regeneration, zwei, die Erfüllung mit dem Heiligen Geist, die Ermächtigung des Heiligen Geistes, minus die Taufe des Heiligen Geistes. Außerdem Zungenreden ist die eindeutige anfängliche Beweis der Taufe mit dem Heiligen Geist. Wir müssen täglich mit dem Heiligen Geist erfüllt werden. Denn wir unsere Lehrkiewer sollen, dann brauchen sie, um sich taufen zu lassen, und lernen sie die abc apostrophes des hebräischen Glaubens. Fragezeichen, wenn die Jesus als deinen Herrn und Saphiro annehmen möchten. Ich werde beten, eine Erlösung gebet für sie, alles was sie tun müssen, ist gerade nach mehr Reu wiederholen, wird notwendig sein. Eck 2, 38 Reuer und Glauben sind untrennbar Erfahrungen der Gnade. Reuer ist komplett moralische Kehrtwende auf der Straße des Lebens und als Entschuldigung für eure Sünden und Hinwendung zu Gott. Der Glaube ist die Annahme von Jesus Christus und ein komplettes Engagement des ganzen Selbst, ihn als Herrn, den König und Retter ihres Lebens. O Liebe, der allmächtige Gott, Meister des Universums, Vater Gott, ich glaube, ich bin ein Sünder, verloren, geistig tot in den Hades und Hölle verdammt. Ich habe gegengesündigt gegen sie und ihre ganze moralische und zivile Rechtsetzung, ich bereue zu ihnen und bitten sie, völlig vergib mir all meine Vergangenheit, Gegenwart und Zukunft sind und reinige mich von aller Ungerechtigkeit, die rebelliert. Vater, ich akzeptiere, Glauben und Vertrauen in den Herrn Eosose Apostroph, Christus Apostroph. Ich glaube, du gesandt hast deinen Sohn Jesus Christus in diese Welt durch die Jungfrauengeburt, um am Kreuz zu sterben, meinen Platz zu nehmen, komplett, alle meine Vergangenheit, Gegenwart und Zukunft sünden. Ich glaube, er starb am Kreuz und stieg um drei Tage später wieder. Ich glaube, er aufgefahren in den Himmel auf den Thron und gründete das Königreich des Himmels, das Reich Gottes, das neue Reich Israel und wurde Kaiser, Großherzog der Himmel und der Erde und Großbischof der Seele und begann seine Herrschaft aus dem Himmel und einige Tage wird er die Toten und Lebenden beurteilen. Die Gott glauben durch die Auferstehung Jesu Christi haben wir bei einem ewigen Leben, glaube ich. Jesus Christus war für unsere Transgressions verwundet, wurde er für unsere Iniquities, die Strafe zu unserem Frieden lag, auf ihn zerschlagen und durch seine Wunden sind wir geheilt. O himmlische Vater, ich den auferstandenen Leben des Christus Jesus in mein Leben zu erhalten, Vater Gott, frage ich jetzt, dass Jesus Christus sein Leben in mir und durch mich leben. Ich akzeptiere und Vertrauen in den Herrn Jesus Christus als meinen persönlichen und kooperativen Erlöser und Herrn meines Lebens. Ich jetzt versprechen, für mein ganzes Leben für immer dienen du. Ele wunnen und taufe mich mit, in und durch den Heiligen Geist. Führe mich in alle Wahrheit und gib mir die Kraft, dir sie für sofort zu dienen und zu tun, was ich tun muss. In dem Herrn Jesus Christus, 
Ich und wir Predrich, die Kraft des Heiligen Ghost, der Heilige Geist, Sträfling, waren über Reformen, Reue, Vergebung der Sünden, Wiederherstellung und Erneuerung durch meine Impenitent uns die Welten Herzen zu bringen. Liebe Vater Gott, ich gestehe, glauben und vertrauen Sie die in der Westminster Glaubensbekenntnis, die Apostel weichter oder Glauben gefunden in 1 Chor. 15, 1, 10 und das prophetische königliche Wappenministerium, die reformierte Pfingstane sächsischen und royal Empire des Königreichs Gottes Denomination. Ich glaube, zu bekennen und vertrauens das Zungenreden ist die einzigartigen ursprünglichen Beweise für die Taufe des Heiligen Geistes. Ich gestehe, glauben und vertrauen. Die Welt wird langsam und schrittweise für eine nicht wörtliche 1000 Jahre christianisiert werden, und die Kirche wird mit Christus im Paradies und auf Erden und Platz an Weise in einem goldenen Zeitalter des Friedens und Wohlstands zugleich für eine nicht wörtliche 1000 Jahre regieren. Ich bekenne und glaube, die Kirche, die Auserwählten, die sich aus Weißen und keiner Weißpiepels den Körper und die Christuskopf, wird zu binden, gebunden und verriegeln sie den Teufel in den Abgrund. Langsam und schrittweise für das tausendjährige Periode Paradies verloren gehen in das Paradies wiederhergestellt. Dann ist das Problem der Sünde und des Todes wird in vollem Umfang und vielen gelöst werden. Ich glaube, Vertrauen und ein Fest nach dem Millennial. Der Teufel ist leblose, für einen kurzen Zeitraum, so ist Christus kehrt, zerstört Tod und das Fleisch, und Satan wird in den See von Feuerhölle geworfen, und dann das Problem der Sünde und des Todes gelöst ist. Dann Unsterblichkeit anziehen wir. Dann Gottes großen weißen Thron urteilt für die nicht gespeicherten und gespeichert und dann für gute und schlechte die Belohnungen, dann endlich, minus die dritte Himmelalter und der dritte Weltalters. Die ewigen Zustand, ich glaube, vertrauenden fest. Die tausendjährige ist die komplette Auferstehung der Welt von den Toten zu Lebens ewig. Die tausendjährige ist der Zeitraum zwischen Christi Himmelfahrt auf dem Thron und Herrschaft von den Himmeln und der Wiederkunft Christi. Ich glaube, Vertrauen und ein Fest meisten des Buches Revelation erfüllte sich in den ersten drei Jahrhunderten. Ich glaube und ein Fest, dass die Söhne Isaaks, Sachsen, die zwölf Stämme Israel, das hebräische Volk sie, das Kreuz über dem großen Fluss unsere ab dem achten Tag Schaffung abstammen. Die glauben und bekennen, den Mann Adam und Eva ist der erste weiße Mann und die erste weiße Frau, von dem das Saatgütlinie des Herrn Jesus Christus kommen wird und zu vernichten Satan uns die ganze Welt erlöst. Darüber hinaus bringen Frieden und Wohlstand in der ganzen Welt. Gott alle nicht weißen Völker erstellt am sechsten Tag und sagte, es war gut, dann am achten Tag Gott der erste weiße Mann und die erste weiße Frau, Adam und Eva Gottes Befehl gehorchen erstellt, rebellierte gegen Gott, belief die Lüge von der Schlange und verwirklichen die Sünder in die Existenz. Dann fiel der Welt und starb geistig auf das lebende Gott durch Adam. Durch war der Letzte, Adam die Welt wird gemacht am Leben sein, und wird zum ewigen Leben durch das Ende der Millennia auferweckt werden, glaube ich. Ich hatte Sex mit dem Teufel und Cain war geboren. Und aus Kains Descendants unsere Keniter und all die Nachkommen Cain unsere Keniter, ich glaube, vertrauen und bekenne unter dem alten Evangeliumszeit der Bund der Gnade. Nationsgleich Gentiles Nachfahren aus dem sechsten Tag Schöpfer, waren die nicht weißen Völker der Welt. Dann nach der Auferstehung aufstieg des Herrn Jesus Christus auf den Thron und eine Anstalt der Regel aus dem Himmel, Paradies, minus Christ beginnt, die zweite Dispensation des Bundesanmuts durch die innewohnende Verwaltung, Impfeling und Ermächtigung des Heiligen Geistes. Ich belief Großherzog, Großbischof Kaiser Jesus Christus und König Kaiser des Reiches Gottes und das Reich der Himmel und König der Es öffne, das Evangelium in die ganze Welt, und die Barriere zwischen angelsächsische Israel, die weiße Völker, und der Gentiles die Nationen und der, die nicht weißen Völker, wurde entfernt und Christus die Lücke und machte die beiden ein Volk. Im Rahmen der neuen Dispensation des Konvents der Anmut, Nationen und dem Nachkommen Esaus, Hagar, und die nicht weiße Bevölkerung und das Haus Israel zerstreut Ausland unsere. Die Heiden ich glauben und bekennen. Israel unter dem alten Dispens des Bundes Anmut war das Haus Israel und das Haus Judah, die Auserwählten, als an der Kirche vereint, in der Altwehen in Christus Jesus geglaubt, als Herrn und Erlöser. Dann teilen sie es in zwei Häuser. Unter der neuen Ordnung der Bund der Gnade Israel, ist das Haus Israel und das Haus Juda, und die Heiden, die in Christus Jesus als Herrn zu glauben und Saphiron wird das entscheiden die Gemeinde unter der Nord die Erlösten des Menschen. Unter dem alten Testament Israel stieg von zwölf Schwiegersöhne zu zwölf Stämmen nach einem theokratischen Regierung, ein Monarch nach einem Empire dann in zwei Teile gespalten. Es wurde das Nordreich Israel zehn und halb Stämme, um sie als in Darüber hinaus wurden zwei und eine Hälfte der Stämme in die südliche Königreich Juda zugewiesen. Dann wurden sie zerstört und die Königreiche kollapsiert und alle von ihnen weggeführt. 
Der nördliche Königreich komprimiert. Erste und ging in assyrischen Kaptivität 200 Jahre vor der südliche Königreich weggeführt. Nachdem das Haus Israels, Gefangenschaft, sie stiegen über den Kaukusberge gewandert, angesiedelt, gegründet Europa, Großbritannien, Kanada und Amerika. Und das ist, wo sie unsere heute ihnen wurden, später an Kaukasia. Dann brach das Südreich mit dem letzten König von Jude Zedekia. Jeremiah entkam mit den Töchtern der Zedekia nach Ägypten, eine der Namen der Tochter war Skosche, Ruhm verheiratet und aus diesem Ancestry kam Schottland, die europäische Monarchs und mischen sie mit dem Hause Israel. Das Haus Judah ging in babylonische Gefangenschaft, 70 Jahre dann ins Heilige Land wieder aufgebaut, Tempel zurück und waren bis zur Zerstörung des Tempels und Jerusalems im Jahre 70 ab und wurden dann durch die Welt verstreut. Gott sprach zu den zwölf Stämmen, wenn sie mir gehorchen, so sollst du sein, wenn sie das tun, lässt nicht durch euch zerstreuen durch die Welt. Die Stämme wurden durch die Welt, weil es ungehorsam verstreut. Während der Jahrtausendwende sind die zwölf Stämme zerstreut und wieder zurück zu Gott versammelt in eine neue Himmel und die neue Erde, wo Heiligkeit und Gerechtigkeit leben. Darüber hinaus, die Sünde und der Tod wird nicht und Fleisch nicht. Im ersten Jahrhundert wurde das Reich Gottes gegründet und am Ende des Tausendjährigen, das neue Reich Israel werden soll, voll etabliert sich mit den Häusern der Israel den angelsächsischen Hebräer Israeliten, die multiethnische Haus Judah, der schottischen und irischen Haus Judah und den Gentiles immer vereint wie man Personal für alle Ewigkeit. Darüber hinaus ist in dem Herrn Jesus Christus Namen bete ich durch die Kraft des Heiligen Geistes, liebe Vater im Himmel, ich gestehe, Vertrauen und Glauben Sie es drei Weltalter, drei Himmelalters. Die Welt, die war die Welt. Das heißt, die Welt, die komme wird und drei Haushaltungen der Bund der Gnade des Trinity die Hass ist und treffen alle drei Fügungen des Bundes der Gnade administrate. In Christus Jesus Namen, ich bete und bete, Herr durch die Kraft des Heiligen Geistes. Lieber Gott, lehre mich, was das alles bedeutet, in Christus. Ich glaube und bekenne es für Zeiten der Progression für die Kirche und die Zeiten der Rezession für die Kirche der Rief diejenigen sein, leider werden wir einige Menschen zum Tode Hades und Hölle verlieren. Am Ende des Tausendjährigen es wird mehr gespeichert werden, minus dann verloren. Die Kirche ist wie ein Leibbrot, steigen uns die Jestet wird es den ganzen Weg durch das Brot arbeiten selbst. In Jesus Christus Namen beten wir durch die Kraft des Heiligen Geistes, ich gestehe, glauben und vertrauen uns dies historisch korrekt und alle Wissenschaften bestätigen mit uns das Licht der Schöpfung bestätigt ist, das moralische Gesetz bestätigt ist und besondere Offenbarung bestätigt ist, vorhergesagt Prophezeiung uns die Erfüllung der Prophezeiung voraus. Die rationale, logische und Beobachtung, Deduktion, Induktion, und die abgeleitete Wahrheit bestätigt, schließlich kann sie gut dokumentiert sein. Jetzt lassen Sie es sein, bestätigen Sie in Christus Jesus, ich bete. Ich binde Sie, wende es in den Himmel, und entfessern Sie auf als durch die Kraft, den Heiligen Geist. Gib mir die Weisheit, das Wissen und die Früchte des Heiligen Geistes, ich bete und bitte allmächtigen Vater Gott, gebe mir die Gelassenheit zu akzeptieren, die Dinge, die ich nicht ändern kann. Gut, die Dinge die ich ändern kann und die Weisheit und Wissen zu wissen, die Differenz leben eines Tages zu einer Zeit, genießen einen Moment zu einem Zeitpunkt, zu akzeptieren härter als weg zum Frieden. Nehmen, wie es ist, nicht wie ich es wollte. Im Vertrauen, dass er alle Dinge richtig, wenn ihr Hingabe an seinen Willen, dass ich einigermaßen zufrieden voller Freude, in diesem Leben und äußerst zufrieden mit ihm für immer in die nächste sein. Hinzusehts durch die Macht des Herrn Jesus Christus und die Kraft des Heiligen Geistes eine wohnende und Ausfachung der Heilige Geist Taufe des Heiligen Geistes Amen. In order to get saved, it requires a full confession and believing in your heart and accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. So now if you said that prayer, now are saved. If you believe in your heart, you're now saved, born again. Now what you need to do is learn the essential doctrines of the Christian faith. So you know what you believe, why you believe it, and how to do the work of ministry. And I got the, just the place for you to go to start on your new walk, your new study with the study. And walk with the Lord. Just go to my YouTube page, type in my name, and scroll through the scroll through the menu and find those sermons that teach the essential doctrines of the Christian faith, the ABCs. 
go through, study it, and then get baptized to full immersion. Uh, go to a church, tell the pastor what you did. Would you like to know more about Jesus Christ? And uh, go through their classes that teach you the sense of doctrines of Christian faith and get baptized through a mo full immersion. Start walking with Jesus. You're on a new journey now. New life. And make sure you study the Bible and get you started. Read the book of John. One Kings nineteen to one eight. Jezebel sent Elijah a threatening message. Carnal hearts are hardened and enraged against God, by that which should convince and conquer them. Great faith is not always alike strong. He might be serviceable to Israel at this time, and had all reason to depend upon God's protection, while doing God's work, yet he flees. His was not the deliberate desire of grace, as Paul's, to depart and be with Christ. God thus left Elijah to himself, to show that when he was bold and strong, it was in the Lord, and the power of his might, but of himself he was no better than his fathers. God knows what he designs us for, though we do not, what services, what trials, and he will take care that we are furnished with grace sufficient. 1 Kings 19 to 9 13. The question God put, what doest thou here, Elijah, is a reproof. It concerns us often to ask whether we are in our place, and in the way of our duty. Am I where I should be? Whether God calls me, where my business lies, and where I may be useful. He complained of the people, and their obstinacy in sin, I only am a left. Despair of success hinders many a good enterprise. Did Elijah come hither to meet with God? He shall find that God will meet him. The wind, and earthquake, and fire, did not make him cover his face, but the still voice did. Gracious souls are more affected by the tender mercies of the Lord, than by his terrors. The mild voice of him who speaks from the cross, or the mercy seat, is accompanied with peculiar power in taking possession of the heart. 1 Kings 19 colon 14 18. God repeated the question, What doest thou here? Then he complained of his discouragement, and whither should God's prophets go with their complaints of that kind, but to their master. The Lord gave him an answer. He declares that the wicked house of Ahab shall be rooted out, that the people of Israel shall be punished for their sins, and he shows that Elijah was not left alone as he had supposed, and also that a helper should at once be raised up for him. Thus all his complaints are answered and provided for. God's faithful ones are often his hidden ones, PSA underscore 83 to 3, and the visible church is scarcely to be seen, the wheat is lost in chaff, and the gold in dross, till the sifting, refining, separating day comes. The Lord knows them that are his, though we do not, he sees in secret. When we come to heaven we shall miss many whom we thought to have met there, we shall meet many whom we little thought to have met there. God's love often proves larger than man's charity, and far more extended. 1 Kings 19 colon 1921 Elijah found Elisha by divine direction, not in the schools of the prophets, but in the field, not reading, or praying, or sacrificing, but plowing. Idleness is no man's honor, nor is husbandry any man's disgrace. An honest calling in the world, does not put us out of the way of our heavenly calling, any more than it did Elisha. His heart was touched by the Holy Spirit, and he was ready to leave all to attend Elijah. It is in a day of power that Christ's subjects are made willing, nor would any come to Christ unless they were thus drawn. It was a discouraging time for prophets to set up in. A man that had consulted with flesh and blood, would not be fond of Elijah's mantle, yet Elijah cheerfully leaves all to accompany him. 
when the Savior said to one and to another, follow me, the dearest friends and most profitable occupations were cheerfully left, and the most arduous duties done from love to his name. May we, in like manner, feel the energy of his grace working in us mightily, and by unreserved submission at once, may we make our calling and election sure. 1 Kings 19, 1 8. Sandte Isabel Leitsch eine bedrohliche Nachricht. Hernal Herzen sind gehärtet und gegen Gott erzürnt, durch das, was davon zu überzeugen, und sie erobern sollten. Großes Vertrauen ist nicht immer gleich stark. Er könnte in dieser Zeit gewartet werden, um Israel und hatte allen Grund, auf Gottes Schutz hängen, während sie Gottes Werk, aber er flieht. Er war nichts der bewusste Wunsch der Gnade, wie Paulus, abzuscheiden und bei Christus zu sein. Gott also links Elijah vor sich hin, um zu zeigen, dass, wenn er fett und stark war, war es in den Hirn und die Macht seiner Stärke, aber von sich selbst er war nicht besser als seine Väter. Gott weiß, was er entwirft für uns, auch wenn wir es nicht tun, welche Leistungen, was für Studien, und er wird darauf, dass wir es mit dem Gnade ausreichend ausgestattet zu nehmen. 1 Kings 19, 9, 13 Die Frage, Gott zu setzen, was tust du hier, Elia, ist eine Zurechtweisung. Es geht uns oft die Frage, ob wir in unserem aufgeführt sind, und in der Arzt der unsere Pflicht. Ich bin, wo ich sein sollte, wohin Gott ruft mich, wo mein Geschäft liegt, und wo kann ich sinnvoll sein? Er klagte über die Menschen und ihre Hartnäckigkeit in der Sünde, ich bin nur nach links. Verzweiflung der Erfolg hindert viele gute Unternehmen. Hat Elijah kommen hierher, um mit Gott zu begegnen? Er wird finden, dass Gott ihn zu treffen. Der Wind und Erdbeben und Feuer machte ihn nicht sein Gesicht zu bedecken, aber die Stimme immer noch taten. Gracious sehen mehr von der Gnade des Herrn beeinflusst, als von seinem Schrecken. Das milde Stimme dessen, der vom Kreuz oder dem Gnadenstuhl spricht, wird mit besonderer Macht in Besitz zu nehmen Herzen begleitet. 1 Kings 19, 14, 18 Gott wiederholte die Frage, was machst du hier? Dann klagte er seine Entmutigung, und wohin sollte Gottes Propheten gehen mit ihren Beschwerden dieser Art, sondern um ihren Meister? Der Herr gab ihm eine Antwort. Er erklärt, dass die gottlosen Haus Ahab soll ausgerottet werden, dass das Volk Israel werden für ihre Sünden bestraft werden, und er zeigt, dass Elijah worden nicht allein gelassen, wie er war, und auch, dass ein Helfer sollten sofort für ihn erhöht werden soll. So sind alle seine Beschwerden beantwortet und zur Verfügung gestellt. Gottes Gläubigen sind oft seine Verborgenen diejenigen, Psa unterstrich 83, 3, und die sichtbare Kirche ist kaum zu sehen, der Weizen in Spreu verloren, und das Gold in Schlacke, bis Sichten, Raffination, Trenntag kommt. Der Herr kennt die Seinen, wenn wir es nicht tun, er sieht in Geheimnis. Als wir in den Himmel kommen, werden wir vermissen viele, die wir dachten, dort getroffen habe. Wir treffen viele, der wir wenig gedacht, und dort getroffen haben. Gottes Liebe erweist sich oft als größer als der Mensch nächsten Liebe und weit mehr erweiterte. 1 Kings 19, 1921 Elijah fand Elisa durch göttliche Richtung, nicht in den Schulen der Propheten, aber in diesem Bereich, nicht lesen oder zu beten oder zu opfern, aber das Pflügen. Müßiggang ist niemands Ehre, noch ist Haltung jedes Mannes Schande. Eine ehrliche Berufung in der Welt, nicht setzen uns aus dem Weg zu unserer himmlischen Berufung. Ebenso wenig wie es getan hat LSH. Sein Herz durch den Heiligen Geist berührt, und er ist bereit, alles zu verlassen, um Elijah teilnehmen konnte. Es ist in einem Tag der Leistung, die Untertanen Christi sind bereitgestellt, noch würde jede zu Christus kommen, wenn sie nicht so gezogen wurden. Es war eine entmutigende Zeit für die Propheten, um ein Gesetz ein Mann, der mit Fleisch und Blut angehört hätte, wäre nicht gern Elijah Mantel sein. LSH noch fröhlich lässt alle um ihn zu begleiten. Wenn der Erlöse sagte zu einem und zu einem anderen, folge mir die liebsten Freunde und profitabelsten Berufen wurden freundlich gelassen und die schwierigsten Aufgaben von der Liebe zu seinem Namen getan. Mögen wir in gleicher Weise, spüren sie die Energie seiner Gnade an uns mächtig und durch rückhaltlose Unterwerfung auf einmal, können wir unsere Berufung und Erwählung fest. Heavenly Father, O Almighty God, we pray hail to the Invictor's crown, ruler of the Fatherland. 
Hail to the Emperor. Feel in the throne splendor the high ecstasy and full to be darling of thy people. Hail to the Emperor. Neither steed nor mounted knight secure the towering heights where princes stand. Love of the fatherland, love of the free man. Create the ruler's throne like crags at sea. Holy flame, glow, glow and expire not for the fatherland. Then we all stand valiant for one man gladly fighting and bleeding for throne and empire. Commerce and science hoist with courage and strength their chief aloft. Warriors and heroes deeds find their laurel leaves faithfully preserved upon thy throne. Forever continuing to bloom our flag may wave boldly on the high seas. Ah, how proud and majestic casts over land and sea widely the German eagle its flaming gaze. The Emperor Wilhelm, hereby people's ornament for many a year humanity's pride. Feel in the throne's splendor, the high ecstasy and full to be darling of thy people. Hail to the Emperor. Germany, Germany above all things, above everything in the world, one, for protection and defense, it always stands brotherly together. From the muse to the mammal, from the aedica, to the belt, vertical bar, Germany, Germany, above all things, above everything in the world. M. Madukin. German women, German loyalty, German wine, and German song shall retain in the world their old beautiful chime and inspire us to noble deeds during all of our life. Vertical bar, German women, German loyalty, German wine, and German song. M. Maduka, unity, and justice and freedom for the German fatherland. Let us all strive for this purpose brotherly with heart and hand. Unity and justice and freedom are the pledge of happiness. Vertical bar, bloom, in the glow of happiness, bloom, German fatherland. M. Maduka. The cry resounds like thunder's peal, like crashing waves and clang of steel, the rhyme. The Rhine, our German Rhine, who will defend our stream, divine. Dear Fatherland, no fear be thine, dear Fatherland, no fear be thine, for man true stands the watch, the watch, at the Rhine. For man true stands the watch, the watch, at the Rhine. They stand, a hundred thousand strong, quick, to avenge their country's wrong, with filial love their bosoms swell, they shall guard the sacred land, mark well. He casts his eyes to heaven's blue, from, where past heroes hold the view, and swears pugnaciously the oath, you Rhine. And I, stay German, both. While still remains one breath of life, while still one fist can draw a knife, one gun still fired with one hand, no foe will stand on this Rhine sand. Should my heart not survive this stand, you'll never fall in foreign hand, much, as your waters would know and, have we our hero's blood, to spend the oath resounds, on rolls the wave, the banners fly high, proud, and brave, the Rhine, the Rhine, the German Rhine we all shall stand to hold the line. So lead us with your tried command, with trust in God. Take sword in hand, hail Wilhelm. Down with all that brood. Repay our shame with the foe's blood. And O Kaiser Jesus Christ, of the empire of the kingdom of the heavens and God, and King Jesus Christ of the world, long live the second Reich and dust forever to the third Reich, and long live Kaiser Jesus Christ of the kingdom of God and the heavens and King of all the world from the far corners of the earth. Let this prayer be so for Anglo-Saxon Hebrew Israelites, and for the multi-ethnicity House of Judah and for the Scottish and Irish House of Judah and the descendants of the sixth day creation, the Gentiles. We ask and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Ghost, Amen.